one of the things I've observed in our practice is people will stop a probiotic protocol prematurely expecting to see full resolution in let's say two to four weeks. And we do have data now showing that the peak level of improvement may not be achieved until the second or even third month. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Ruscio. Great news. A recent study just found that probiotics combined with fiber can resolve methane SIBO. And SIBO, including if it's methane or not, can cause a cast of symptoms, including bloating, constipation, abdominal pain, but also things like fatigue, depression, malabsorption, and inflammation. So we'll unpack the study and then give you an at-home protocol so that you can replicate what these researchers did, which led to a reduction in SIBO positivity levels by about half. All right, so let's jump in. Now, SIBO stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. This is where you have more than the normal levels of bacteria in the small intestine. And when these bacteria and or archaea metabolize foodstuffs, they release gas. And some gas is normal. But if there's an excess of gas that can cause the feeling of gas and pressure, it can also alter motility or movement of food through the GI lumen, leading to constipation. And the other part of SIBO that's interesting is the ability for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth to cause what's known as extra intestinal symptoms. This includes, but is not limited to, things like fatigue, depression, even restless leg, rosacea, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, malabsorption of nutrition, malabsorption of the thyroid medication, and also inflammation. So it's certainly something that if it's present, resolving the SIBO may yield a number of symptomatic improvements not limited to the GI. Within SIBO, there's three gas types. There is your hydrogen, your methane, and also your hydrogen sulfide. This study found a resolution of methane SIBO. Now, methane in particular is interesting because it's not technically produced or caused by bacteria, but rather a similar but different organism known as an archaea. And as part of their metabolism, they release methane gas and this methane gas is implicated in constipation. Now, it is a little bit of a chicken or the egg, meaning we know that methane can cause slow motility, therefore constipation, but also we know that treatments like fiber or laxatives that improve motility will also reduce methane. So there's likely this bidirectional relationship between methane and constipation, but nevertheless, this study is interesting and novel because it found a resolution. So let's unpack this study, specifically what they found, what they did, what they found. So in this study, they were trying to assess are probiotics and really fiber combined helpful for SIBO? It was a randomized control trial looking at, I'm sorry, it was a non-randomized clinical trial of 32 patients with SIBO. They were given probiotics plus a prebiotic fiber and here are their results. A reduction in methane SIBO, the positivity rate was cut in half, fantastic. Also, a reduction in inflammation. Now, remember that one of the reasons why SIBO can cause inflammation is because of activation of the immune system, which we'll detail more in a moment. But something I want to help you to understand is that if you're having symptoms that you're attributing to inflammation, and this can be very nonspecific, but if you feel as though you're inflamed or you know that you have inflammation, this can emanate from the gut. So I just want to kind of underscore that and come back to it more in a moment. And then the reduction of diarrhea, constipation, and improvements in indigestion are not surprising given that this occurs in the small intestine. And here is a what I found fascinating graph from the study. What you're seeing is the methane gas levels over time. In a SIBO breath test, they'll do a sample at 0, 20, 40, 60 minutes and on for about three hours. And you'll register the amount of methane, the amount of hydrogen, and in some tests, also the amount of hydrogen sulfide. And what you're seeing here 
is the pretreatment group had higher levels of gas. And then clearly with the other line here, you see that the post-treatment, after-treatment group had a much lower level of gas. So they more than have the level of positivity of methane SIBO, yay, which is great news. And here's the physiology I wanted to sort of walk through with you. Why I feel this to be so relevant to the conversation is depending on who you read, who you listen to, antibiotics can be offered up as the first therapeutic for SIBO. And the antibiotic rifaximin, I think, has great data and is very well tolerated. However, probiotics are oftentimes, I feel, glossed over. So here is some of what was published in the Journal of Molecular Science and the mechanistic underpinnings of how it is that probiotics can improve SIBO. You have enhancement of the epithelial barrier, essentially a reduction of leaky gut, which has been shown in other data, actually a recent meta-analysis, so a summary of clinical trials, found that probiotics can resolve leaky gut. And this is in part due to what you're seeing here, enhancement of the epithelial or the lining of the gut. And along with that, you have production of antimicrobial substances. So probiotics directly release these antimicrobial peptides, which fight bacteria, but also fungi and protozoa. And they also compete with pathogens or other dysbiotic organisms to kind of crowd them out. And all of this collectively can reduce methanogens and also resultingly improve motility. But it's this other aspect that I want to call your attention to in addition. On the other side of the intestinal lumen here, waiting is the immune system. And if you have a healthy gut membrane, you won't have leakage through or hyperpermeability, and therefore you won't have activation of the immune system. But if there is leakage, then on the other side of the immune system, you stimulate various receptors in the gut, like toleric receptors 1, 3, and 4, which then lead to an inflammatory response by the immune system. And that's what you're seeing here. And this is the modulation of the immune system in an anti-inflammatory direction, which is one of, I think, the underappreciated benefits of probiotics. Okay, so what did these researchers do? Here is their protocol. They used a blend of bifidobacterium, lactobacillus, bacillus, and enterococcus. This study being performed in Asia does not allow this formula to be purchased commercially. Uh, we checked. Uh, so I'll give you an alternate protocol that you can use that's commercially available, but I want to give you specifically what these researchers used in this study first. So a blend of different types of probiotics at 2.4 billion CFU per day, which is not a high dose. And we've discussed in the past that between one and 10 billion CFU, generally speaking, seems to be the sweet spot for a dosage protocol. And the duration was eight weeks. Now they combine that with a fiber prebiotic blend of inulin, cellulose, and oat fiber at 15 grams per day. And this is fairly high. And the one thing I want to point out for you is that for some people, this may flare them. If you've noticed high intake of vegetables, of fiber, doesn't sit well with you, maybe you've tried low FODMAP and that's been helpful. These are all indications that you may not do well with this level of fiber and prebiotic intake. Now, there is evidence showing that fiber and prebiotic supplementation, more specifically fiber, improves regularity, improves motility, and we know that that can have a positive impact, as we discussed earlier, on reducing methane levels. However, it does come with a higher level of adverse events. So just know your body, and if you're someone who has maybe said, wow, when I eat lots of salads and, and vegetables, I feel better, that indicates this may be a good protocol for you. However, if you're someone who's noticed the opposite, then at least out of the gate, you may not want to use this specific protocol from this study in particular. Here is a evidence-based set of probiotic protocols that you can use. Now, we recently did a fairly comprehensive review on best dosages of different probiotics. There are really three different types of probiotics. Your blends of lactobacillus, 
your soil based. And this study combined the two and your Saccharomyces boulardii. Now across many different clinical trials, you see the following emerge as either the most studied or the most effective. So for the lactobacillus type probiotic, we have data informing what is the most effective dose and duration. And this is one to 10 billion CFU per day for two to three months. Now, conversely, for Saccharomyces boulardii, we don't yet know what the best dose is, but we do see across studies, the most common dose range used is between 10 and 15 billion CFU per day for two to three months. So that's your second option. And I'll give you specific products in a moment, but option one, lacto bifido blend. Option two, a different probiotic would be Saccharomyces boulardii. And then option three, soil-based probiotics. Again, we don't know what the optimal dose is here, but we do know what has been used in most of the studies. And this is a range between two and six billion CFU per day, again, for two to three months. I want to underscore the two to three months because one of the things I've observed in our practice is people will stop a probiotic protocol prematurely expecting to see full resolution in, let's say, two to four weeks. And we do have data now showing that the peak level of improvement may not be achieved until the second or even third month. You should see improvement before that. You should see improvement, I think, within a month, but you may not apex until the second or third month. So just be a little bit patient. Now, specifically, what are the products you can use? There are a number here. I've listed the ones we use in our consulting practice along with a few others. All of these are readily available online. And you see the, the cost differs. Different probiotics have different concentrations, different uh, serving size counts. So there's going to be variability. But essentially, to get started, you're looking at anywhere from $20 to about $50. The cheapest type of probiotic, if you're trying to optimize for cost, the cheapest categorical type are the soil-based probiotics. As you can see here, you can do two to three months for $40, $50. The lactobacillus bifidobacterium blends are the most expensive, and you're looking at $50 for just one to two months. And then the Saccharomyces boulardii is kind of in the middle with a cost range of $20 to $40. So the good news here is you have options. All of these types of probiotics have been shown in randomized control trials to be beneficial for SIBO. So you don't have to pick one formula in particular. What's most important, coming back to our summary here, is that you use one of these formulas at the dosage indicated for the duration indicated, and then reappraise your symptoms. Always check this with your doctor, but this is the evidence-based protocol for SIBO and for gut health at large, and you can use any one of these. And then coming to the fiber prebiotic component of this study, here are three different options that you have, and anywhere from three grams, so the, the product that we use in the clinic, we recommend a lower dose. Three to five grams of prebiotic seems to be the level at which you'll see beneficial effect on the microbiome or the microbiota, but you won't have a higher prevalence of adverse events. So this tends to be the way we like to use prebiotics and fiber. Now, if you wanted to go higher, here's two options that will get you to 10 or essentially 15 grams per day. But keep in mind the caveat that this may not work well for all people. Now, another caveat is to be aware of the fact that fiber and prebiotic supplementation can cause turbulence as your system adjusts for about a week. So to have some gas, bloating, flatulence, burping for a week transiently is not abnormal. But if you're getting to the week or a little over week mark, and those symptoms are still occurring and not abating, that could indicate that this is not the right fit for you or it's too early. Usually the more quiescent someone's symptoms are, the more tolerant they are to fiber and prebiotics and the more benefit those can exert. Whereas the more symptomatic somebody is, the more likely they are to potentially have a negative reaction. So there's two things to bear in mind. The more symptomatic you are, the more cautious you should be. 
and that transiency and some side effects can occur for about a week. Okay, well, that is the overview of the study. Remember, you have lots of options for improving your gut health and for improving SIBO. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, or share. It helps us get this science out to more people so that they can also improve their health. <music>